folks, um, so this is a very quick run through of section B of paper three. Now this is the one that can kind of stump a few people, they're not really sure what it's about. So I'm going to break it down as much as I can, just keep it as simple as possible as I usually do. Um, so it's paper three, it's your kind of, um, your field work and pre-release paper. Now section B is the smallest, um, it's really nothing to stress about, it's, it's really small questions, uh, no nine markers for example, uh, but the key thing is it is not your field work. Okay, that comes later in section C. Okay, it's not your field work. But the principles are the same. So it's really testing how good you are at geography. So there's kind of four sections to it. So if you divide your page into four, and then I'll put the main headings in and then we'll fill them in. So they are testing firstly your ability to interpret data. So how well basically you understand graphs, charts, um, a data presentation. They're also testing your ability to analyze data. So that's slightly different. That's using things like trend example anomaly, um, it's map skills, it's quantitative, qualitative data. So a bit more about analysis here. Um, they'll also check that you're able to evaluate uh, not just data here, but sort of evaluate the whole kind of field work. And lastly, they're sort of seeing how well you can kind of connect to broader concepts. So um, these might be things that you've actually done. Uh, things like, for example, rivers field work or human field work. But they're real life, kind of real life things that are <coughs> being used as the data. Okay, so if we start with um, if we start with interpreting data, so what you can expect, these are just some heads up on what to expect. So you might be asked to um, finish off, this happens actually in all geography exams, but you might be asked to finish off a graph um, or a chart. So that will be where there will be a line graph or a bar chart or a pie chart and you'll be just finishing it off, just adding in that final bit of data that they've given you. Um, it might be that they're actually asking you to, so they give you a complete graph, but then they'll ask you to recommend. So have a look, say for example, <clears throat> they've presented the data in a line graph, but it's not continuous data. You might suggest actually a bar chart would have been better for that or a pie chart. So they might ask you to recommend um, data presentation methods. So you might say, actually, this would have been better presented as a pie chart, for example. All right, so which one is more suitable? And finally, in this section, they might ask you to suggest even possible data collection methods. So um, surveys, for example, they might ask you about that and what would be better. So. Um, they might suggest, ask you to suggest, sorry, possible data collection method or methods. There we go. So data collection and then data presentation and then, yeah, finishing off a graph or chart. So I would say that section probably the easiest and even honestly if you didn't look at a past paper and you just went into it you'd probably be okay um, but there's other sections which are a little bit tougher uh, it's a really good idea by the way to look at a past paper and look at section b this is probably one of the best things you can do to prepare for this exam now when it comes to analyzing data my students we all use always always use t e a Okay, it's like a cup of tea, okay, on a saucer. Um, so T means trend. If you're not sure about that, it's basically the pattern. What kind of pattern is there in the data? E stands for example. So for that, you know, we're looking for specific data, a specific pattern or relationship in the data. And the A stands for anomaly, which is basically anything that doesn't really fit. 
and it looks a bit odd or out of place. So anything that doesn't fit question mark or odd. Okay, so when we're analysing any kind of graph or chart, that's what we use. Um, the other thing that you want to think about is there might that might pop up is possibly map skills, okay, um, and different types of charts and graphs. So just just be aware of that. You know, you might have a radar graph in there that might throw you. They're actually really easy to analyse, but um, if you haven't seen one before, that might be a little bit tough. I'd look that up. Um, and then another thing is, you know, you might be looking at quantitative data. Now, quantitative is numbers. Okay, so you might be looking at number data, which is what you're most useful, used to, probably. But they might give you quality, qualitative, which sounds really similar. I always have to say it the same, but lit. See that lit bit in there? That's like literature, English literature which means words, okay? So they might give you that. So just be prepared, you might have different kinds of data. Normally I just see quantitative, but um, yeah, just be prepared, that could come up. Now, evaluating fieldwork, that's super easy, super simple. They're gonna expect you to be able to pick out on this pretend data that's not um, yours, you know, this unfamiliar fieldwork. What are the strengths? Can you spot uh, any weaknesses? Okay, in that data presentation, perhaps. Um, how reliable is it? They might ask you about reliability or how valid that word could come up. So, you know, that really means how well can we trust it? You know, how useful is it? Um, and by being able to trust the data, we can then draw really good conclusions. So, you know, what conclusions? Um, you draw, and I don't mean drawing a picture, you know, just what, what conclusions can you take from this situation? And then finally, how would you improve it? So if you had more time, if you, you may not even doing it really, it's pretend, but you know, if you were able to do this yourself, what would you do differently? Okay, and then the final one is really just this idea of you connecting, thinking like a geographer and connecting to broader concepts. So be, expect there to be something on physical um, field work. Okay, so it might be something to do with, I don't know, coasts or rivers. It could be anything, to be honest. And then the other one is human field work. So you might get data that's for a town or a city. Um, and that's okay too, or people, or surveys, or opinions, but whatever it is, it will be real world, okay, so it'll be things that you could come across in real, in the real world, and they want you to basically think like a geographer, so can you apply some of that, all that knowledge, and all that amazing brain that you have from all your lessons, and, and work that you've done with geography, to apply to this. It's common sense, really. Let's put that in there. Common sense um, stuff. So please don't worry. Do look at past papers. You can get them on revisionworld.com and have a practice. Good luck.